Hello, and welcome to episode 15 of the Wooly Bee Podcast. My name is Sarah, my username on Ravelry is MacAttack, and my username on Instagram is Mac08Attack. If you are a new viewer, thank you for coming and checking me out. Hopefully you enjoy. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. Um, it's been a couple weeks since I last recorded. Today is Sunday, July 23rd, 2017, uh, and it's been almost a month, uh, so thought it was due for another episode. Um, this is a knitting, mostly knitting podcast. Um, there's some other stuff, but mostly knitting. Uh, so let's jump right in. Um, first, finished objects. Um, I have one and I'm calling it finished. It's not 100% finished, but it's close enough. Um, I finished my Lindisfarne wrap. Um, and this is a wrap by Lucy Hag. I think it's Hag. Um, and it's very green. So hopefully, yeah, that shows it. So here is what she looks like. Um, again, this light doesn't look totally accurate, but it is green. So I knit this out of Neighborhood Fiber Company Rustic Fingering in Roland Park, which is, ooh, there's hair. Um, Roland Park in the white and Fells Point, which is the green with some really awesome splashes of yellow in it. Um, so I... I finished this actually back towards the beginning of the month. Um, the hardest part, well, not the hardest part, but I did my eye cord bind offs and all of that. Um, I made a very quick little boomerang video on YouTube of me seeking this. So this was knit, if you're a new viewer, in a tube. A giant tube. And then when I was done, I steeked that tube to make it flat, and that steak became the fringe. So I steak, cut the steak, took out the fringy bits, um, so I had all this like crinkled yarn, and then I blocked it. And then once it was dry, and by once it was dry, I mean like two weeks later, because I was lazy, I tied the fringe. And here's what it looks like. Uh, the only thing I have not yet done is trim the fringe. So it's freshly tied as of this morning. But it is all uneven. And that's because I couldn't find good scissors. So I'm going to figure out some other plan later on. But it is a lovely long wrap. It's about six. The knitting, the knitted part is about six feet long. And it's probably about a foot wide, give or take, a little over a foot maybe. And here's what she looks like. So I cannot wait for St. Patrick's Day to finally show up so I can actually wear it and show it off in all of its cable-tastic glory. Until then, I don't know what, it, what I'm going to do with it, but... It, um, even if I never wear it, it was a joy to knit. It was a fun knit. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I had a good time with it. Um, I knit the body of it on a US 3, which I have no idea what that, I'm going to look it up right now, what that is in millimeters. And then I actually went up to a US 5 for the I-cord bind off, um, so a US 3 is a 3.25 millimeter needle, and a US 5 is a 3.75 millimeter needle. Um, and I went up, I quit buying off because it was tight on the 3. And I, I knew that this wasn't going to stretch a ton, but it did need just enough to flatten out, and I did not want the edge to be too tight. So I think the 5 is fine. I probably could have even gone up to a 6. Um... But the only thing I also need to do once or at some point um, is hit the edges with some steam because I used a combination of blocking wires and knit blockers for this because I wanted those edges super straight 
And when you use blocking wires and you're weaving it in and out of your fabric, sometimes you'll kind of get like a ripple from the blocking wire. So usually steam will take care of that. So I just have to do that. Um, but I'm really pleased with it. Um, I'm glad it's done. And I'm glad I can say that I knit it. So it's a fun knit. So that is my first finished object for this episode. My next finished object, I'm again calling it finished. It still has a little bit of work to do, but I'm calling it finished. Um, I knit the stovetop hat by Tin Can Knits, and there we go. Um, so I knit this out of Sweet Georgia Superwash Worsted in the Lucky colorway, and Make this light. I'm actually going to fix the light. Ooh, hit the table. I'm sorry, guys. That's, I think, a little more color accurate, though it's a little darker. Um, in the lucky colorway, which is green. It's a... I hate to say greener green than the Lindisfarne Fells Point green. Um, it's not as yellow. And you can't see. There we go. So you can see the cable detail. And then the rest of it is just moss stitch. Um, my ends are woven in, but they're not cut. I have not yet washed this. Um, and I think I will. I will not block it because it fits perfectly. Um, but unfortunately, I am post-shower this morning. So I'm not going to put it on. But I think I just wanted to watch the yarn puff up a little bit. I think it will. Um, but this is without washing or anything, and I love it. The I did have a bit of a wind knitting attacks moment to seal the knit more girls phrase. Um, my hat decreases. I don't know if you can see those. I'm at, I'm pleased with how they turned out, but they're not part of the pattern. Um, so I decided the original pattern. First off, this is by Tin Can Knits. I didn't say that. The original pattern did not have the ribbing flow into the cables, and that bothered me, so I changed it. I neglected to realize that in the original pattern after the ribbing, there was an increase round, and you were increasing by kind of a funky number, which meant that by the time I got all the way through the hat up to the decreases, my stitch count was off by three stitches. And when you have a pattern that's multiple of two, plus this panel that you're trying to keep in pattern, it just, it was a hot mess. Um, so there was a lot of fudging numbers and whatnot to figure out. I did figure something out, and I'm very pleased with it. But don't do what I did. Read your pattern. But um, that's what the top looks like. So. Um, I, I love it. And then what I'm going to do, I was, I knew I wanted a pom-pom. So I decided that I'm going to put on this Toft alpaca pom-pom on top. It's going to look like that. So this one, I believe, is the stone colorway, and it's so but I'm going to probably wait until the fall to tie it on um, because all my alpaca pom-poms need to be hit with some steam to make them not flat. So, um, But I love it. I think it'll be a great hat to wear all fall and winter. So that's another finished object. My, la my next object is kind of a hoe. Um, it's a half-finished object. Um, I finished... A mitten. And I actually put it on because it'll look better. I finished one Chevalier mitten, I believe that's how it's pronounced, by, I'm going to guess it's Mary, Mary, Muinonen. We're going to go with that. She's a finished designer. Um, if you search Chevalier Mittens, you'll find this. It pops right up. 
but here is my mitten. And I am knitting this again out of Sweet Georgia Superwash Worsted, this time in the Glacier colorway. Just get it close to those cables. Um, so I finished the first one just over a week ago, um, and I put it down because of my next project that I'll show you, talk about in a minute. But I finished the first one, um, and this, I just, I love this pattern. Um, it's a free pattern, and it's fantastic. I love it. So I actually knit a pair of these about three, three and a half years ago, I think, out of, let's see. Neighborhood Fiber Company Capital Luxury Worsted, which is no longer available. Um, and I have worn these things to death. They fit beautifully. They're cozy, they're warm, and they're beautiful. There we are. And so I knew I needed another pair. Instantly, as soon as I finished them, I need another pair. Many years later, we're halfway there. Um, these have not been blocked, but they have been washed. They've been worn a lot, so they're kind of blocked with use. Um, and this one, obviously, has not yet been blocked because it doesn't have a friend. But I made a couple tweaks to this pair that I it not to to this pair and I made tweaks on both of these from the original pattern um that's all outlined on my project page and the vast majority of them are changes that a bunch of other people have done um one of which what's really nice is this pattern gives you two places to lengthen um, one is at the cuff down here and one is up at the fingers so you can adjust it for your hand I did not do either of those box sections because I did not need the length um, and then on the new pair, the Sweet Georgia pair, I tweaked two of the cables to make them actually weave properly. Um, so you can see, let's see if I can hold this up. Oops, sorry. So you see how that's all nice and woven there? Whereas this whole camera mirroring thing is totally throwing me. Right here, it is not up in this little box. This cable goes over twice. I decided to change that. So that's also in my project page. When this is done, you'll all have better comparison photos. Um, but yeah, I think it's a fantastic mitten. I will certainly see myself knitting more in the future. One of my favorite things, it's kind of a bear to knit. But you start off with just a teeny bit of ribbing all the way around. And then you keep the ribbing on the back. But you transition into this awesome cable right here. And what this does is it hugs your wrist. It's not tight, but it hugs. Um, so you can see that's right here before you get up into the, into the hand portion. And it just, it helps ensure that your mitten is nice and windproof come the winter. So I love that. And then what I do at the top, and I have the decreases all written out, I use somebody else's, but I do a three needle bind off at the top. Um, you flip it out inside out first, but it gives a nice finish. So yeah, I love these. Um, I knit these on a US 5, which is again a 3.75 millimeter needle. It's a worsted weight yarn. The original pattern actually calls for you to hold, I think, fingering weight double which you can certainly do, but both this half done pair, single mitten, and my original pair were done in worsted weight. Uh, so perfect for a single skein of worsted weight that you kind of unsure what to do with, but want something wearable. Um, it's also a really, really awesome gift pattern in my opinion, because it's super quick. If you can cable, you can knock a mitten out in just a couple days. You could, if you are a really speedy knitter and have the time, you could probably do a pair in a weekend. I did this one in 
a total of like 24 hours over two days, but 24 hours. So yeah, I love these. So I'll do the, fin the second one once my work in progress is finished, which leads me to my work in progress. It is living in my orange fringe supply field co what now my orange fringe supply co field bag there we go um but it is a secret sample knit so i cannot show you i'm sorry um i really can't say much about it at all other than i'm on a very tight deadline and i'm i've been freaking out since i started uh, because it's such a short deadline and I kind of got into it without thinking the deadline was going to be later than it was. And then they were like, surprise, no, we actually need it by this day. And I was like, oh, the yarn's already in the mail to me. Awesome. So I'm just kind of pounding my way through it. Um, I will say this, and I will clearly share more details when it's actually released and I can talk about it. But if you are familiar with the technique used, it is not a hard pattern. And it's actually kind of brilliant. Um, it's kind of cool. That being said, when I do patterns that are not that hard, I make stupid mistakes. So multiple times I forgot an increase or a decrease, or I did the wrong kind of increase. Like I increased too many stitches. And on top of that, so I this happened over two days. I spent two whole days frogging, basically, which was ridiculous is I would notice a mistake, I'd frog back to it, get myself going, get another row done, and then I'd realize like 10 rows before was another mistake. So if you're gonna frog any portion of your project back to an error, make sure there are no errors beforehand. That way you're not like frogging and frogging and frogging. So it just cost me some headaches this week, but I had all day yesterday to get frogged back, get it back on the needles, get going again. And I'm making decent, I made some good progress yesterday. Um, I recovered from where, from all the frogging, basically. Um, but there are, the pattern calls for specific marker placement to help you not make mistakes. And what ended up happening was I needed to tweak where I put my markers to help me. Um, so I think once I got that figured out, it was a lot easier for me because I wasn't getting cocky and missing increases and decreases and stuff like that. So it's going to be a cool pattern when it's done. It's just a lot of knitting to get done and not a lot of time. So, uh, I may be a little radio silent on Instagram with knitting because of that, because I just can't show you. Um, the only hint I can remotely give right now is that the field bag coordinates with at least some of the colors of the project, because I match, but that's all I can share, unfortunately. Um, so let's jump into, I have some spinning. I did do some cross stitch over the past few weeks, but I didn't get it, and it's not that much. Eh, it's, a, well... There's some, like you can see progress, but it's put away right now, so I'm not gonna get it. Hey Benji. We may have somebody nibbling on dry food behind me. And by nibbling, it's probably gonna sound really loud. But I have spinning. Um, so Tour de Fleece finishes today, and I was kind of a fail. Um, I said I was gonna not do it, and then I decided to do it, and then I failed. Hey, Ben. Um, but I did get something at least done. I started, or well, I guess let me show you. I finished, and I'm not color accurate, but that's okay. My Hobbledy Hoy Macintosh Apple Batlings. I spun the singles to these last year during Tour de Fleece and never got around to flying them. So I got them plied up this year. So the bulk of this is red. There is a fair amount of pink in it. And then as you can see, there are 
little blips of things like blue, purple, yellow, and black in here. Um, there, I don't know if you can tell, but there's some sparkle. There is some silk. Um, yeah, it's just kind of fun. I did it as a two ply and it came out somewhere between a sport and DK. Um, I have not measured it since I soaked it, but my pre-soaking measurement was about 160 yards out of two ounces. And I'm quite pleased with it actually. And it's, it's so light because it's, um, a bat preparation, so it's a woolen prep, but there it is. Um, I spun the singles last year on my Bosworth Red Heart mini spindle, and I applied it on my Spanish Peacock Holly Snowflake spindle. So, nice fun little little spin. Should not have taken me a year, but, but it did. Um, so that's what I have for spinning. I did spin, like, this much on another spin that I've been working on for years, but it's not worth showing, so. Um, but yeah, I just, the spinning bug just hasn't been biting lately. By lately, I mean like the past year. So, I feel guilty about it, but I'm not going to force it either. So, that's okay. Um, so let's move into stash enhancement. Um, ooh, whacking the table again. I... Just realized I should not have put my screen down like that. Sorry. I was hiding yarn behind the computer. Um, I went to Fiberspace as usual a couple weeks ago and was bad. Well, I wasn't too bad, actually. Um, and I may turn the light up just a little bit more. I got a couple things. Um, so there was a shipment that had just come in of Lemonade Shop Simple Sock, which is the same yarn that my Find Your Fade yarn set is out of, that I haven't knit yet. And I was doing the math, and I realized that I was going to need, no matter what I did, I was going to need a second skein of my last color. So I got it. So this is not going to show this color really at all. It is more than just dark gray, but this is silver lining. Oh, you can kind of see. Okay, so it's a dark gray, but there are little blips of blue, purple, there's some green and yellow. Um, a bunch of different colors kind of splashed on and then overwashed with dark or vice versa, but it reads as dark gray. So I got a second skein of this to go with my Find Your Fade. I also picked up a, what appears to be a new colorway called Oceanside View. And this is her typical rainbow speckle, but the base of this is aqua. Um, unlike Shark Bait, which is a sky blue base, which I also have, um, but aqua. And what I think, I may pair this with Hippo Disco, which is basically the same thing but a lighter gray base. Um, they look pretty cool together. And I have some Hippo Disco on Sparkle. So they may go together. Or I just may keep it because it's kind of fun and make socks or something out of it. So I got those. And then I got, I've been loving this colorway since I first saw it. And I can see myself getting more than just this one base, but I got Neighborhood Fiber Company Studio Worsted in Swoon, which is a lot like the Lemonade Shop. It's aqua, but there are a lot of lime green, navy blue, electric blue speckles, and there's some variation with some sky blue. So I don't know what this is going to be. It may become like a hat and mittens. It may become a cow. I don't know yet. But I love it. And this is 100% superwash merino, 400 yards. 
So I've got a lot of options with what I do, but it's a nice speckly skein. Um, I also, you may, I think I talked about it on the last episode, I ordered Plucky, my first Plucky order, um, in their Plucky anniversary update back, like, the second week of June, and it was a guide to order update, which I think is how most of theirs are, but it arrived about a week ago. So I got Plucky Feet in the small batch number 15 colorway which is a natural base with like magenta, orange, and aqua blue speckles. And this will be some kind of socks. So this is 425 yards, 90% superwash merino, 10% So plucky feet. And then I got two skeins of Plucky Trusty, which is 250 yards each of 100% merino, worsted weight um, in the plie colorway. Ooh, that, nope, that's not doing it justice. It's a soft ballerina pink. And so I'm gonna knit a cowl out of this. Um, I love it. There's so many plucky bases now that I want to try, but I need to get my stash down a little bit before I go a little too hog wild. Um, ooh, sorry. Um, so that's what I first stash. Oh, I have one more thing. She's living in my blue field bag right now, but I got... Nope, there we go. Uh, it's not in focus. It's annoying. A Fiber Space Fiber Girl pin. So this is the Fiber Space Fiber Girl logo that they had done into a pin. So I got that. Put that in my field bag. Um, I have a bunch of other pins I need to go in my bags as well. But yeah, I love it. So I... I think my secret project may come in here because I like the pin on the blue because it coordinates. Um, and I want to take my bag with my pin with me, um, which I'll talk about later. So I want to do a talk. This is going to transition into kind of what I've been up to lately, but kind of its own segment as well. Um, I want to talk about organizing stash. So I have been home alone all week and it's kind of been awesome. My mom is out of town right now uh, visiting her sisters um, and I will be going up on Wednesday morning as well. And my dad and my brother have been on an entire week long West Coast baseball trip. They are currently in Phoenix and they will be coming home early tomorrow morning. Well, red eye tonight. Um, but they've been in San Francisco, LA, and then Phoenix. So I've been here all alone with the cats which meant that it was finally time for me to organize my stash because it was a hot mess, guys. So let me, I wanted to go through first the iterations of stash organization that I've had just so you can see how they've changed over time with my needs and then what I've been doing this time. Um, basically, my stash organization system is dependent on the size of my stash. Um, Basically, my financial constraints to a lesser degree than the size of my sash. Um, and cats. Cats were a driving force behind a lot of my changes. So back in the olden days when I first started knitting, and for the first few years when my sash was very small, I was using those fabric-covered cubes that you can stick on bookshelves. Like Target sells them. I got them at Target. I'm sure you can get them at other places, but I got them at Target. Um... I didn't bring one down, unfortunately, but they're about a foot, cubic foot, and I think they're just cardboard, but they're fabric covered and you can stick them on bookshelves, and that's what I used, and I started off with four of those, and I had my stash vaguely organized by weight, so I like the laces, and I didn't really know anything about weight at the time, but I had the laces and the lighter weight stuff in one, the medium-ish weights in another, the heavier weights in another, and then like the red heart, something like that. 
And that worked great until we got our current cats. And in my bedroom, I have a dresser, but at the end of that dresser is a top bookshelf. And I had put the bins at the top of that bookshelf, but it meant that every single night for like the first two years that I had our cats, Ben would walk across the dresser, climb up these fabric bookshelves because he has claws, and then pull the stuff down every single night. And it was driving me nuts. And my mom kept saying, why don't you get bins? Why don't you get bins? Or bin. Um, and I was like, well, I'm afraid once I put it in a bin, I'll never see it. I won't be able to find anything and whatever. Well, eventually, I broke down and got some bins. Started off with a couple. And then as my stash grew a little bit more, I went and got a few more bins. So I started off with about four for a while. Um, I, I'll show you in a minute. I like the smaller, I think they're 32 quart bins. Let me, actually, I'll show you. This size. Which... 30 quart, 28 liter, um, as opposed to the big ones, because as you can see, well, this one's very stuffed, so it's a bit heavier than the others, but I don't want a giant heavy bin to look. So I started off with a few of those, kind of grew, and then about three-ish years ago, I took all my stash, I laid out and I organized all of it in bins, and I think I had to go get a couple more. Um, and I think that's when I blossomed up to like eight or nine bins, maybe. It doesn't really matter. But at the time, I went from just a few bins to now covered storage. And I did that because it was cat proof. A side benefit is it's also dust proof and bug resistant. Um, these bins are not bug proof, but I mean, I've never had a bug problem, knock on wood, but Bugs are going to be pretty hard pressed to get into these, I think. Um, so they're suitable for my needs. Um, but at the time when I reorganized about three years ago, I organized by weight and then by color, which was an extension of what I had been doing. And so I went through lace all the way up to super bulky, organizing by color, which at the time worked fine because I didn't have that much of anyone brand or any one base or anything like that and so I was primarily driven by color at that time and it was easy enough I had two bins of fingering so and I could just look because their bins are clear I could say all right this is the bin that has the pink fingering there which one of my pink skeins am I looking for which worked great until I started working at Fiberspace and my stash just exploded and it got out of hand. And what, at one point, a few months after I started working, I just had yarn thrown in my closet that didn't have space in bins. Because I didn't have enough bins. I only had enough for what I had, stash wise. Um, I took one of the big bins, the big coat bins that you typically see, and I filled one of them with yarn, put it in the closet. And then over time, I filled up two more. So now I have three big bins, I had all these smaller ones, and then I just had bags upon bags upon bags of yarn, which is ridiculous. And every time I would come home from buying yarn, I would just shove a bag in the closet. Even if it was a mixture of worsted and fingering and hand, like, it just all got shoved in. And then as I was doing projects where I was pulling stuff out of bins, it was just getting mixed up and I couldn't find a darn thing. And it, I knew I needed to organize for a long time, particularly once I came back from school, because I had took out a subset of my stash, put it in separate bins and brought it to school. So now that was even more jumbled and that never got organized. And it was just, <sighs> when I was trying to pull yarn from my starting point back in May, I knew what I wanted to pull and I just had the hardest time finding it all. And I pulled it all, and now I pulled yarn out of like five or six different bins, but a couple skeins here or there. Now I had all this yarn, and I didn't know what to do with it. Because I didn't have a particular home, I didn't know what bins had enough space. It was a mess. So long story short, I knew that when I was going to have this whole week home alone, it would be the perfect time to organize, because I could use my parents' bedroom. 
my bedroom has a lot of stuff in it. Um, in part because I came back from school and had to put stuff places. Um, but also because I sleep in there every night. That's part of it. So my parents' room had a bigger bed and more floor space and more light and a door. So I was able to just take all of my stash last Monday and put it in there and begin to organize. So I'm doing a similar system to what I did before, but it's a, a tweak to it. Um, what I did a few months back was I went through all of my stash on Ravelry and put it into an Excel spreadsheet. And I put different weights of yarn on different pages in that spreadsheet or different sheets. Now you can just straight up download your stash off of Ravelry into Excel, but it didn't break up the information the way I wanted it. And it gave me a lot of information I didn't want. So I broke down by brand, base, colorway. Oh, let's see what else. Brand base color, the bin number that it's in, whether or not it's wound and ready to knit from. Then I added the dye characteristic, which I'll talk about in a minute, the natural color, the texture of the yarn, um, whether or not it's sparkle, whether or not it's single ply, whether or not it's beads, any notes, stuff like that. And some of those categories I tweak depending on the weight. Like I don't have sparkly bulky. Sparkly bulky is just not a thing in my world. I don't need to know if it's sparkly or not. Um, but so I've been going through the spreadsheet and organizing. And so what I did was I took my bins and at first I picked a weight to start with and I just found all of it. So I started with my lace, then I did sport, then I did Aaron bulky, super bulky all together. DK worsted and all I've left is the fingering, which is an undertaking in and of itself. But I this may make some noise as I whack the table, but every bin now has a number. And in my spreadsheet, I have the bin number of every yarn. In that way, when I'm trying to find something, I can go into the spreadsheet and go, all right, that's in bin five. Go to bin five, and I know it's in there. Um, the reason I did not do that in Ravelry, even though I know in Ravelry there is a like store blank that you can fill in, is I just didn't want to go and edit every single stash entry. I may in the future go back and do that, but for right now the spreadsheet works. Um, if you are interested in doing something like this and don't have your stash in Ravelry, I would take the time to put it in. As you're organizing, do one weight at a time, put it in Ravelry. It's so much easier to have that information there as well as the information in your spreadsheet. And, that way you, and take the pictures, take the time to take the pictures and take decent pictures. You wanna be able to have it be color accurate to at least be able to plan your projects and such. So I've been working on this all week and I've been calling it Project Acorn. And it's been a really good experience. Um, I have about as much yarn as I thought I did. I'm not overly shocked by it, which was good. I was afraid I would be. And it also gave me a good opportunity to go through and pick out things for D-Stash. So I will probably be putting stuff up probably in August once things get a little bit more settled. But... Um, it just was a really good way to go through everything. Once I had all the stuff pulled of a given weight, I began organizing it. And depending on how much I had, depending on what system I went through, with base, or with weights that I had less yarn for, I kind of separated into things that are more rustic and things that are less rustic. Just kind of put them in. For things like my DK, my worsted, and particularly my fingering, I'm going to be sub-organizing by brand and by weight. Or not weight, base. So, like, I have a boatload, boatload of hazelnuts, artisan sock. All of the artisan sock is going to be together, and that's going to be next to the hazelnuts and tice. So all the hazelnuts is together, um, but separated by base. So that way, sometimes I really want to knit with a particular base. 
I can go into my bin and go, all right, which one of these do I want to knit with? Um, stuff like that. And I don't need it necessarily organized by color because I don't necessarily knit as much by color anymore. And because a lot of times I'll be, I'm doing projects now where I'm using colors, different colors of the same yarn that are not necessarily stored in the same spot. So instead of doing a two color project with purple and yellow, which I would never do, but I could, instead of going to two different spots to find that in the purple spot and the yellow spot, let's put them together. If they're going to go together, why not put them together? So in this particular giant DK bin, which I'm going to lift up again, push my computer back. This one, I actually organized all the skeins standing up because they were like the perfect height for this bin. Um, other ways, I put them horizontally. But these are organized vaguely by base. So up at the top are my Hedgehog Merino DKs. In the middle are my Neighborhood Fiber Company Studio DKs. And the bottom are my Hazel, or not Hazel, it's my Miss Babs Cunlin with a couple other skeins thrown in for good measure. If I had multiple skeins that went together, and then I tied them together. Now with some of my fingerings, I'll probably put them in plastic bags just because tying for one reason or another may not be suitable. But for instance, I have these two skeins of Hedgehog Merino DK in the oracle colorway, which is mostly gray, and the pollen colorway, which is yellow. They have a lovely little bow because they're tied together. Because they go together. They were bought to go together. They have a pattern picked out together. So, they're there. Um, and this goes for yarns that are the same base and yarns that are different bases. I have, I'm not gonna pull it out because it's gonna be harder to get back in. But I have a couple Hedgehog Merino DKs and Neighborhood Fiber Company Studio DKs that are all in one project. They're all tied together. Um, I have here my Wolf Oak Luft that I showed in the last episode tied together. Um, and so that way it's not a permanent thing if in some period of time I decide, you know what, maybe I really don't want to use those yarns together. I can do that, but if I am playing around with my stash and I'm saying, all right, what do I want color-wise? I need X number of colors. I can say, oh, well, this one was earmarked to go with this other skein. Do I still want to do that or not? Instead of sitting there and guessing or messing up my system. So that's what I've been doing. Um, that being said, if I have multiple skeins of the same color that are all, whether or not they're going to go together, they're not getting tied because I don't have enough ribbon. But I am pretty good about saying, all right, hey, I have four skeins of Merino DK and Petrol. They're probably going to go together. There's probably a reason why I bought four. And in that case, there is. So um, that's something that's a little bit easier to check. For me. Um, so I'm excited because I think I'm actually going to fit all of my sash in all of the bins I already own, which I didn't think was going to happen, but I knew that packing the bins better was going to save a lot of space. And if not, I may have to go buy an extra bin or two of the small 32 quart. Um, I do have three big bins of yarn, and that's just because it's what I had. At some point in the future, I would like to break those down. But without knowing exactly what my new apartment setup is going to be for yarn, I don't want to do anything like that yet. And yeah, I'm just going to leave it as such. If I do decide to keep them in the big bins, I am going to swap out two of them for the bins with the locking lids. Because I like that better. One of them has the locking lids, but two of them don't. The lids are more secure and they're a whole lot easier to carry. Which is my big thing. And lift and such. Um, so that's kind of the crash course in how I'm organizing my stash, Project Acorn. Um, and it's just been, it's been a really good experience so far to get it organized. Feels good. So let me kind of transition into what else I've been up to lately. 
besides being home alone. Um, I just finished two and a half weeks after 4th of July, so I hope you had a good 4th of July, of what they call extended school year, which is something that districts do for their special ed students to keep them in the school routine, help make sure they don't have any academic losses over the summer. And I did it a couple of years ago, and I did it again this year with elementary. They're kind of a mix of intellectually disabled and severe and profoundly disabled kids. Um, we had, it was This past week was tough because we had one kid who was just so naughty. My goodness. Um, but it was a lot of fun. We just kind of play, practice letters, numbers, stuff like that. Um, sing a lot of songs. But it was good. It was just a half day every day, which meant I could come home and organize yarn. Um, but I will say I do not appreciate getting Flip the Bird by a seven-year-old, period. So that happened. But it was good. And I don't remember where I was in the apartment search at the last episode, but I picked an apartment. I've leased an apartment. So it's all mine. I have purchased a couch that they were like, oh, by the way, this is going to take eight to ten weeks to come. I was like, oh, I'm moving in in four. So I'm not going to have a couch for the first month that I'm living there. But that's okay. I have a mattress, where I will have a mattress. And I have a kitchen table, kitchen chairs, and a living room chair for my Kia. So I at least have something to sit on in the living room that's not a chaise lounge for the outdoors. I have a kitchen table to eat on. And I'll have a bed to sleep on. And that's it. Um, I am going to go back and order a dresser. Um, Because I think I'm going to want that space. But other than that, I just need coffee tables and end tables and that kind of stuff. But we're getting there. I move in in a couple weeks. Um, I'll be moving to Alexandria, Virginia. So I'll have about a 15-minute commute to work. uh, About a 10 to 15-minute drive to Old Town. It's going to be really good. There's a lot to get done between now and then, but it'll be really good. Uh, Because I will be starting, if you are a new viewer, a new teaching job in Fairfax County teaching high school science. So, very excited. Lastly, let's see. Not much else over the past few weeks um, that I can think of off the top of my head. I will be going out of town starting on Wednesday. I'll be going up to visit my mom and her sisters. They're all outside of Boston right now. And I'll be spending time at the beach, going down maybe to the Cape. I don't know yet. Um, but just enjoying all that is a New England summer that I love. So I'll be there for about a week, and then I move. So counting down the, the moments. But that's about all I have for this week. Um, I hope if you are one of the bajillion people living in the middle of this heat wave that we're having, that you're staying cool. Um, cooler weather is coming. We got some good storms yesterday. Get some good storms today, hopefully. Um, it's cloudy, which is why the lighting for this episode has been terrible. But uh, storms are, cooler weather is hopefully coming. Uh, Otherwise, I hope you have a great month. Um, I'll hopefully be in my next apartment when I record next. One more thing. We do have a knit-along running called the Speckled Summer Knit-Along or Crochet Along, which is um, crochet or knit up any project using speckled yarn. And as long as it's finished, I believe between June 22nd and September 22nd let me pull the dates up you can enter it in for prizes right now we have one entry i would love to see more and if you have any questions please let me know we have a chatter thread and a finished object thread um yep so anything finished on or between june 21st and september 21st um, are eligible whips are allowed um one entry per finished object or post, um, please double, triple, quadruple, if as you see fit. Otherwise, have a great few weeks, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.